Canada is among the largest countries in the world in terms of land. However, it has a very small population of just 38 million people, which is around 10 times less than the entire population of the USA. Out of these 38 million people, 80 to 90 percent of Canadians live within 100 miles of their border with the USA. Secondly, 70 percent of Canadians live in the south of the 49th parallel, which is considered as the imaginary border of the USA and Canada. Thirdly and most shockingly, 50 percent of the entire Canadian population lives in the south of Canada, below this red line on the map. Moreover, it's not just Canada, whose dense population lives closer to the US border, most of the Americans also choose to live closer to the Canadian border, under the 49th parallel, and above the line drawn across the southernmost point of Canada, including Washington, Montana, New Hampshire, Alaska, Michigan, Massachusetts, and most of the other urban states of US. Why is this so? Besides a large vacant land in North Canada, why do most of the Canadian population chooses to live in this small densely populated area, bordering the United States? Well, we are going to explain it all to you in this video. So sit back and relax, while we explain the facts, the geography, and the history involved in creating this uneven habilitation in Canada, and the US. Canada becomes very cold during the winter season. Especially the Laurentian Plateau, also known as the Canadian Shield. It covers a large area of Canada, around 8 million square kilometers, which is masked by Precambrian igneous and Cracker Jack metamorphic rocks. Due to this, farming gets almost impossible in this whole area, not only due to the geography, but also because of the severity of the weather which is extremely harsh and cold. So, the first mystery is solved. It is the cold weather and scarcity of food availability in the large Canadian area that keeps it unpopulated. Now coming to the second important factor, which keeps the southern belt of Canada densely populated. In the south of Canada, below the 49th parallel, there are Great Lakes. These make the soil of this area very fertile and suitable for farming. These are the largest lakes by surface area than anywhere else in the world, the Salty Caspian Sea is the lake with the largest surface area on Earth, stretching 143,200 square miles. Secondly, Lake Superior is present on the Canada-US border, being the largest freshwater reservoir having a surface area of 31,700 square miles. These lakes absorb the scorching sun heat in the summers, keeping them cool. In winters, the same lakes radiate the heat back, keeping them relatively warmer than the rest of Canada. Also, the warm air blows from the Mexican Gulfs, making the weather more pleasant in this area. That is the reason, Quebec City is known as the most fertile city in entire Canada. There are beautiful farms, orchards, and wineries in this wonderful city. If you think this is the only other reason why most Canadians live in this area, you have to wait. Because there is a third and most convincing reason behind this Canadian population choice. It is about geopolitics and power significance. This is all because of the St. Lawrence River. For more than 50 years in the past, this river was the easiest way for Europe and the rest of the world to travel and explore North America and the South Canadian regions. The ships from Europe used to sail down this river, exploring and trading in this region. However, there was still a problem. The Lachine Rapids. This is located right next to Montreal Island. For decades and centuries, Montreal's coast was the main coast of the whole North American region. However, soon, as the technology developed, this problem also vanished. Canadians build up the Lachine Canal, right in the middle of Montreal Island, making a new, easy, and clear way for sailing ships. This makes the sailing more convenient, and of course the trading as well. Expanding its way from Montreal to St. Lawrence to Welland Canal, the ships could now sail, explore, and trade around the whole region of Great Lakes. That's how the modern city of Toronto and Chicago came into work. These cities established railway systems, making the import and export of goods easy throughout the world. As the development of trading and transportation began, this led to the development and population of this area through immigration. Within a century, the population of these cities boomed by multiple folds. Between the 1880s to 1980s, 
Toronto's population turned from just 86,000 to 2.2 million people. Also, Montreal's population boosted from 150,000 to 1.7 million people. This geopolitical significance of this bordering region has what made the most of the Canadian population, and a giant American population, reside in this area. If you like this video, give it thumbs up. Share it with your fellows. Subscribe to Success Dose for more amazing content like this. Press the bell icon to stay updated with everything that we post. See you soon with another video.